Hello. Ethics is very important in our day-to-day -day life and so is the case uh, when it comes to the academics. Especially when we are publishing uh, our research work, uh, ethics play a major role. So, uh, when we are publishing our research work, normally it is expected that it has to be original and uh, Whatever uh, literature we have borrowed from others, that must be cited in our research work. So keeping that in mind, uh, there is a committee called uh, Committee on Publish Publication Ethics, about which I am going to talk in this lecture. Publication ethics is very important and uh, often as a librarian, we come uh, to face uh, the problems uh, with regard to publication ethics and many times we are supposed to answer those problems or we are supposed to sort out those problems. So committee on publication ethics they have given certain guidelines uh, which uh, the people who are engaged and involved in creating new knowledge must follow. Uh, Uh, in this presentation, we are going to cover several topics uh, that is uh, uh, Committee on Publication Ethics, its needs and objectives. Uh, we are also going to discuss about guidelines on good publication practices. Uh, there are several subtopics uh, which are uh, which will be covered under uh, this broad heading that is study design and ethical approval, authorship, peer review, conflicts of interest, peer reviewing procedure, redundant publication, plagiarism, duties of editors, media relationship, and uh, dealing with misconduct. So these guidelines which are given by uh, Committee on Publication Ethics or we call it as COPE, uh, are basically a kind of uh, guidelines, they are not prescriptive guidelines, one has to follow but people can choose out of it. Apart from that, uh, one can also uh, uh, approach to cope in case of any difficulties and they will guide you in sorting out the problems. COPE is a voluntary organization which normally talks about the best and ethical practices in scholarly publications. Let us talk about how it has been initiated. Uh, first meeting of COPE was held in 1997 under the leadership of Mike Farthing. Uh, he was uh, uh, an editor to a journal, uh, a reputed journal. Uh, this meeting was a kind of informal meeting of editors where they discussed about misconduct in scholarly publication and it was largely felt in that meeting that there should be something uh, uh, being done in order to cope up with the problem of uh, uh, scholar, uh, misconduct in scholarly publication and it was realized that it has been a global, global phenomenon. The mission of COPE was to educate and advance knowledge in methods of safeguarding the integrity of the scholarly record for the larger benefit of public. There has been a board of trustees which is the uh, highest body of COPE uh, uh, which takes decisions on academic, administrative and financial affairs and uh, APA, in this committee there are 12 members which includes one chairperson, one vice chairperson, one secretary and a treasurer. The broad need by COPE was formed was to encourage uh, intellectual honesty 
Pope also informs uh, about publication ethics and prevents misconduct. Uh, it creates uh, awareness on uh, good practices, best practices to follow publication ethics, uh, especially in scientific publications. COPE also leaves guidelines uh, which are useful for authors, editors, editorial board members, readers, owners of journals, and publishers. The main aim of uh, these guidelines are uh, basically advisory. It is not a prescriptive guideline that one has to follow. Uh, Apart from that, these guidelines are being evolved over a period of, a period of time. So, uh, you may see a lot of changes in the guidelines over a period of time. Uh, these guidelines are widely disseminated and uh, are used by academic and research community, especially the editors of journals, because many a times uh, these are the guys who come across with academic misconduct uh, uh, kind of uh, things so basically these guidelines are uh, meant for editors these are meant for authors who are involved in scholarly publication in this slide let us talk about what is a good research a good research is well justified it is well planned and appropriately designed and most important it has to be ethically approved so whenever somebody is conducting research the study design uh, has to be ethically approved by certain kind of bodies or it should be widely accepted by the professionals like uh, normally this uh, COPE guideline is given for uh, in the field of medicine and in medicine uh, in India, it is ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research, who uh, registers the clinical trials. So anyone who is going for clinical trials has to register with ICMR for his research work for clinical trial, whatever he is conducting, so that in future when he is publishing his research work, it has to be authenticated by ICMR that this work is an original work. In any kind of research work, the most important part is to decide upon the authorship. Okay, So there is no definite guideline or definition given by COPE about the authorship. But again, it says that author should take responsibility for a particular section of a study. Uh, the authorship includes contribution of the conception, design analysis, and writing of a study against the collection of data and other, other routine work. So some way or other way the author has to be involved with the study or study design. Uh, not only that, uh, the guideline also says that it is always good you decide the role of different contributors in the beginning itself uh, uh, when you are conducting the study. And the authors, uh, how many are there, they all should take public responsibility for the content, uh, whatever they have prepared or the research they have prepared. And they must come forward to defend their work. Another important aspect of these guidelines are conflicts of interest. Uh, normally, conflicts of interest uh, is because of certain factors. These factors could be personal, commercial, political, academic, or someone's financial interests. Well, uh, these factors influence the judgment uh, of author sometimes, uh, even sometimes reviewer, uh, editors, uh, in order to make certain judgments. Uh, 
well afterwards when these judgments are revealed or the decisions are uh, uh, you know put in the public uh, forum uh, and readers realize that the result whatever they are seeing it is misleading so it becomes very unreasonable for the reader peer reviewing is a very important exercise in order to publish your research work or it is a very important part in scholarly publishing normally peer reviewing involves uh, peer reviewers uh, who review your research work who read your research work and then they give their opinion on your research work sometimes they give suggestions sometimes they may uh, accept your research work or even your research work can be rejected anyway the peer reviewing process many a times uh, helps you to improve your research work okay uh, this process of peer reviewing is journal specific and these reviewers are normally decided by the editors however uh, the authors can also suggest the name of reviewers uh, to the editors uh, and the editors when they send your document for reviewing they are supposed to make the confidentiality uh, about uh, the name of the reviewer uh, none of the copies of the manuscripts has to be retained by the reviewer or by the editor and no data should be copied the reviewer should do the reviewing process as early as possible and their reviewing process should be unbiased in case if the reviewer feels that there is a misconduct he should immediately inform uh, to the editor and uh, then the journal should publish accurate description of their peer reviewing process or the journal should notify uh, the author or take the uh, action against the author that has to be decided in due course apart from that the journal should also perform uh, regular audits on the number of papers accepted number of rejected uh, it is known as uh, uh, academic uh, audit process of each journal often we have seen that uh, uh, a publication uh, has been repeated across different journals uh, only by changing the title but uh, moreover if you see the hypothesis the data the discussion points uh, and the conclusions also sometimes it is all same uh, which should be avoided uh, as per the guidelines however if the same is the same publication you have put in a conference proceeding as abstract that can be resubmitted to a journal however uh, when you are submitting to the journal uh, one should mention the details of the abstract uh, which was presented in the conference the republishing of a paper in a different language it is acceptable uh, whenever the author is uh, publishing a paper uh, he should disclose all the details of the related papers or any kind of uh, previous studies which are already being done in his own language as well as in different language Plagiarism, plagiarism is a, a very important aspect in academic publishing which has to be avoided at any stage of your publication. Normally, in plagiarism, we see two kinds of plagiarism. One, one is uh, plagiarism of the idea and the second one is plagiarism of the text. Okay, any case, the plagiarism of idea and plagiarism of text uh, copy ditto ditto copy should be avoided okay uh, in fact 
uh, it sometimes or often it attracts if it is found uh, some kind of action against the author okay so plagiarism can uh, be traced at any level starting from your planning of your research work writing and at the time of publication of your research work and it may happen in any kind of media whether it is print or electronic version of your research work so normally it is always advised one should avoid plagiarism uh, in his research work in any kind of uh, research paper which is published in a research journal the role of editor is very crucial because he is the one who decides which paper has to be accepted uh, at the first step apart from that he only directs the research work to the reviewers he collects their responses and based on their responses he has to inform the author about the actions taken on the paper or if uh, some improvement is required he should request the authors to make the necessary improvements normally the responsibility of editor is very crucial and the status of any academic journal largely depends on the status of the editor uh, who is associated with the journal he should also look into the interest of readers authors uh then the owners of editorial board members so as i told you that uh, the editor can straight away accept or reject a paper uh his decision should be based on the importance of the topic originality of the topic and the clarity of thought mentioned in the paper any challenges uh, about the previous work uh, which has already been published that also he should sympathetically look into he cannot just brush them off all uh, original studies uh, has to be peer reviewed before publishing and a uh, full account uh, of uh, uh, reviewers report should be taken without any kind of biasness or conflict of interest uh, any paper which is submitted to editor has to be considered confidential uh, when a published paper is subsequently found to contain major flaws it is editor whose responsibility is fixed so he has to be very careful extra cautious and unbiased media relation is a very important guideline which is given by cook because many times it so happens that some research attracts lot of public interest like for example the development of covid-19 vaccine now any kind of development in covid-19 vaccine attracts lot of public interest attracts a lot of media interest and that has to be Uh, reported uh, as and when the development takes place but uh, what happens is uh, many times the journalists when they report uh, they report some premature findings okay so here uh, the author should play uh, an important role uh, when such kind of publications are being done in mass media the author author should give a balanced account of their work to the journalist okay sometimes uh, it so happens that the journalist uh, they do not know how to put the things in the language of common man so in that case the author should help the journalist to put their work uh, in the language of common man so that a common man also can uh, understand what is happening uh, in the research they should also put the facts the data whichever is required uh, 
for making their research work more convincing to common man. In case uh, some meeting is there and journalists are being approached, the author should in be informed uh, beforehand that journalists are going to attend this kind of uh, meeting uh, where the author is going to present his case. Uh, as I told you previously that uh, uh, the COPE guidelines are basically designed keeping the medical sciences in mind. So any kind of clinical trial if it is happening and the patients are involved, they are also supposed to know what is happening around. So uh, the researcher must let them know all developments. Okay. Uh, it may be helpful to authors to be advised of any media policies operated by the journal in which their work is to be published. So for example, if you are publishing in a journal and that journal has a kind of a media policy, the author should be informed beforehand uh, about the media policy of the journal. Advertising is an important part of COPE guidelines. Advertising creates awareness. Sometimes it attracts funding. So according to COPE guidelines, the advertising has to be encouraged. However, any kind of misleading advertisement uh, must be discouraged. The crux of COPE is how to deal with any kind of uh, academic misconduct. Well, there are certain principles uh, they have already laid. Uh, the general principle of misconduct is any intention to cause others to regard as true that which is not true. That means the author is lying. Then uh, any kind of examination of misconduct, if you are doing it, must focus on the intention of the researcher, author or editor, reviewer or publisher involved, why he has conducted uh, a kind of misconduct or he has lied in his publication or he has followed a malpractice. The best practices requires complete honesty with full disclosure. So any kind of deception has to be avoided whether it is intentional or unintentional. The code of practice may raise awareness, but this code of practice cannot be said it is an exhaustive because it goes on evolving over a period of time. The next step comes when a misconduct is reported, how to investigate it. Okay, so uh, what Cope says that the editor should not simply reject a paper. Okay, uh, when it is reported or it is questioned about misconduct, he should look into the case, he should pursue the case. Okay. Uh, about the misconduct. COPE uh, as an agency is always willing to advise in cases of misconduct if it is required but uh, for legal reasons they say that they maintain anonymity. So the person who is advising he would uh, advise uh, on the condition of anonymity. Finally, it is editor who decides what action has to be taken on any misconduct case which has been reported. Well, uh, there may be certain uh, cases which could fall under the category of serious misconduct. In such cases, Editors must take the allegation and suspicion of misconduct very seriously. Okay, 
however uh, he doesn't have a legitimate right uh, to uh, uh, you know uh, conduct an investigation into the matter uh, but again he has to make decision once he gets to know that there has been a case of misconduct he can take decision to alert the employer of the accused researcher uh, the employer means uh, the body where the author has conducted the research or on uh, on which he is on a payroll so the employer of the author uh, in some cases uh, must be informed by the editor however uh, cope says that editors should not go beyond to assemble uh, the a complete case or the proofs say for example there is a research work uh, about which somebody has uh, made a complaint about misconduct and then editor finds that okay uh, to some extent it is true but again the editor should not go beyond that to find out the other publications made by the author what he has done okay so he cannot go and assemble the proofs but yes the document which author has submitted to him for the publication in his journal he must conduct an investigation however he doesn't have a legitimate right to do so because many times it so happens the journal is published in one country the author uh, is uh, who has submitted the document is placed in some other country so lot of legal issues would be there which would involve international laws and so on so that is why uh, the editor works on a kind of a rigor age you can understand however if the reviewer present uh, the proof to the editor of any kind of misconduct uh, in the study the editor should uh, take action and sometimes he is required to notify the uh, employer of the author uh, if the accusation of serious misconduct are not accompanied by convincing evidences in such cases ed editor can seek confidentially some kind of experts advice but again if expert also raises serious questions then editor must notify the misconduct to the employer of the author however if uh, uh, there are no proofs about the misconduct the editor should proceed with the normal uh, routine way of publication of the research work in the journal in case of uh, medicals uh, the court says that the guideline says that the uh, editors can uh, notify uh, the general medical councils uh, about the misconduct of author provided he has convincing evidences uh, say for example where the case is different uh, apart from medicine the editor should also i mean say he can also uh, notify the misconduct to any legitimate body uh, which is or legal body uh, to which the editor uh, to which the author is involved or from which the author is governed however yeah, he can also inform to the employer about the misconduct of the author but again if he realizes the editor realizes that the employer has not taken the account of misconduct or has not made any kind of punishment or issued a warning to the uh, researcher or the author the uh, editor can publish a notice to the author okay however uh, 
before doing any or taking any such actions author should be given an opportunity to respond against the accusation made on him about his misconduct well uh, based on the misconduct and the uh, availability of the evidence the editors can uh, adopt some kind of sanctions on the author however uh, before doing that the author should be given ample opportunity to respond to the charges made on him about misconduct because uh, the career of the author uh, is normally on a stake in such cases okay so editor should be sympathetic uh, to such cases uh, before taking any action however uh, if the evidences are there the editor must take some kind of action against the author or the researcher however uh, if he understands that the misconduct is not a very serious kind uh, in nature uh, he can avoid uh, involving the um, uh, employer of the author about the misconduct um, uh, keeping the career of the author or researcher in mind now coming to what actions uh, an editor can take on researcher or author uh, he can uh, seek a letter of explanation from the author uh, about his uh, uh, misconduct he can issue a letter of reprimand and warning uh, for against his uh, uh, misconduct and he can ask him to avoid such kind of thing uh, in future uh, a formal letter also can be issued to the head of institution where he is working or the funding agency who has funded his research work apart from that uh, a notice can be also published uh, citing the case of misconduct or plagiarism in the journal for a wider visibility of the said misconduct apart from the previously mentioned sanctions uh, the editor can write an editorial citing the full details of the misconduct uh, which has been reported uh, he can also uh, refuse any future submissions from the author or the unit or even the institution uh, for the publication in the journal uh, sometimes uh, they can decide upon a stated period also or maybe the sanction can go for a lifelong uh, refusal of any publication uh, formally they can withdraw the paper from the journal uh, uh, for uh, from the journal uh, and uh, they can report uh, the council or the governing council uh, to which the author is a member for further investigation and any further action this class has used uh, these references uh, which you can also go through uh, there is a whole website uh, uh, by ofco uh, that is committee on publication ethics uh, however you can download the guidelines also uh, from the website for your references so uh, this is it uh, on cope as you know that cope is an organization it is a, a voluntary organization which provides the guidelines for any kind of misconduct uh, in a scholarly publication uh, made by uh, the authors or researchers uh, 
Uh, however, uh, whatever guidelines scope has given, these are not uh, prescriptive. Uh, these are basically advisory. Uh, one can follow these guidelines uh, with uh, their own intellect uh, uh, when they are doing editorial process or they are involved in writing research work or research paper. Hope you enjoyed this lecture. Uh, for any clarification, you can write to me at aditya.bhu.ac.in. Thank you.